Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts with a word from Colossians. It's a good one. Starting at verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil, con evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. In the which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Okay? Lie not one to another, seeing that ye put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man. Now, let me let me clarify that. The old man are your old ways of sin, your, your flesh, your, your natural way of hand. I'll cuss him out. I can piece him out. No, no, no. That's what it's talking about. Okay. Now, and have put on the new man. The new man is the one anointed and moved by the Holy Spirit, the righteous man in you, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercy kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of of perfectness. And you know what they say about charity in the Bible? Charity is love. And what the Bible says about love is love covers a multitude of sin. All right. So if you, I, I want to make a point. We're talking about the body of Christ, dealing with the body of Christ. Hello? Am I right? Am I wrong? I'm right. Now, if you're dealing with a human body, liken it to the body of Christ. If you're walking down the street and you trip over a piece of cement, cracked cement, and you almost fall, or you might even fall, do you, when you get up, do you go to the doctor and tell him to cut off that foot? Think about that. Do you tell him to cut your foot off because it was so stupid? It tripped over the cement and got you hurt, got you a skint knee or, a, or scraped up hand because you had to put your hand out to break your fall? Do you, wait a minute. What if you break an elbow? Ooh, you land on your elbow and you have to call the paramedics to take you to the hospital. Do you tell them why you, you know, putting a cast on my elbow, you make sure you cut off that foot because it's the foot's fault that I'm hurt. Sounds kind of silly putting it that way, doesn't it? That's how the bond of perfectness, the bond of perfectness in love, is the way the body of Christ, you and I, he and she, they and us, all of us are supposed to be part of a bond of per perfectness. 
in love. We're sealed together in Christ Jesus. We're not to lamb blast each other because of our imperfections. I am telling you the truth. We have to watch how we deal with each other, you guys. That's why Satan comes in to accuse the brethren because his whole, his whole uh, M.O. is to divide and conquer. So when you have people in the church that are sowers of discord trying to break up friendships, they are not of God. That is not a spirit that works in the love of God. That's a demonic activity. And unfortunately, each one of us, even though we're part of the body of Christ, we can each so easily be used by the devil if we are not careful. Okay, here's a sample. Here's an example of what I mean. You ever see, you ever hear of teenagers who have an issue with cutting? Teenagers, they're looking at their body. This is their precious body. And they take razors and they get upset about something somebody else did. And they take a, a, a razor or whatever it is they use and they start slicing on their wrists, cutting themselves all up on their arms. Why? Or people who sit um, in, a, uh, in a holding tank and, you know, maybe they've been put in an asylum or put in a temporary jail or a temporary holding thing because their behavior is erratic. And you know why we call it erratic? Because normal people don't hurt their own bodies. And you see a man or a woman sitting there banging their head up against the wall. They're hurting themselves. That's not normal. But that is exactly what we do in the body of Christ. We're hurting a part of us when we hurt each other. When we belittle each other, when we refuse to forgive, when we refuse to reconcile, when we spit out a venom and, and tell little lies and, and, and spew out poison. You know what? She doesn't like you. You know what? I saw her looking at you funny. I wouldn't trust her. I mean, what is that? Who are you being used by? What influence? By a demonic entity or by the Holy Spirit? Think about that. I don't care what your title is. I don't care if you're pastor, bishop, um, head bishop, pro bishop, uh, pope, uh, senior. Oh my goodness, they have all these different things. Uh, don't think that you are beyond reproach. Because the same way the Holy Spirit can use you one minute, if you are not walking in the Spirit and you are caught off guard and you are not traditionally mortifying the deeds of your flesh, you can very easily be used by the devil. Think about that. None of us are above faults. None of us are beyond sin. But we can do our best. That's why we have to watch and pray. Because we have to be wary of the things that are going on that are set up for a catastrophe. And if we yield to the flesh, we have willfully opened the door to the devil and said, come on in, come mess this thing up for us. We have willfully done it. Almost like a woman answering the door, knowing that she doesn't know who's on the other side and she should talk through the door. But no, she just opens the door. And there's a rapist or a murderer or a kidnapper. Well, she has placed herself in harm's way by opening the door. And when either you or I yield to my flesh or your flesh, we are opening the door and inviting Satan in. Come set a spell. Come ruin this relationship. Come wreak havoc in this church. Come on, let's get rid of the pastor. That's what we're doing. 
we're being little mannequins and little dummies and 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 the ventriloquist is the devil that's why the bible says casting down every imagination every thought that would exalt itself against the knowledge of christ anything that's diametrically opposed to god we are to bat that thing down you get a fly in your around your food yeah you're going to grab a fly swatter quick fast in a hurry before you let that sucker land on your food. That's your food. Well, you should guard your spirit that much more. Mortify the deeds of the flesh. Keep those cuss words silent. Don't give in to that wrath, that anger, that clamor, that strife. Don't give in to it. You don't have to give in. You may feel it, but you don't have to act on it. You know, we did an illustration in one of the uh, groups that I had where I had had one of the guys get up and turn the light out. And the room we were in was extremely dark when the lights went out. Now, that's what happens in our lives. Sometimes the devil turns the light out to cause confusion in relationships, to cause confusion in churches, to cause confusion within a family group. And if we're not careful, if we're not watching and praying, if we are not practicing being still and knowing that God is God and he is in control, we will fly off the handle and ruin a very good thing, sometimes, forever, for good. And it can be irreversible because of how far we take it. Now, what we did, when he turned the light out, I had everybody just sit, don't move, don't get up. But I said, now, do you see anything? And everybody was like, no. I said, do you see the person sitting across from you in the circle? No, we don't see anything. It's dark in here. Right. Now, wait a while, wait a while, let the minutes pass and watch as your eyes begin to acclimate to the dark. Because in the dark, you must establish, you must get your bearings. Because if you jump up while it is pitch black and you react and you panic and you just function as a reactionary, you're going to dart around and rush around in the heat of passion. You're going to hurt yourself. You're going to break something. You're going to do damage. And you're going to hurt someone else. Do you hear what I'm saying? You have to back up from it. Sit down. Be still. Wait and say, Lord, what's my next move right now? Show me what I should do. I know what I want to do but I need you to give me my bearings. Do you hear what I'm saying? And what ended up happening after we waited, we were able to start seeing people across from us. One guy said, she's got a Bible in her lap or a book, some type of book, right? Another one said, oh, brother so-and-so looks like he's wearing his jacket, right? Another one said, oh, that's sister so-and-so. I actually know who that is. Brother so-and-so said, it looks like sister so-and-so's wearing a sweater. He knew who she was and knew what she was wearing over her shoulders. Now, we couldn't see all that when the light first went out. As time went on, we started listening. We started hearing things in the distance that we never noticed. One person said, you can hear the electric hum going through the wiring. Yeah. Another one said they hear a dog barking in the distance. I'm telling you, as time goes on, when you learn to be still where there's a sudden shift in your life, you learn to handle it with grace. And damage does not get done because you have waited until the Holy Spirit can start opening your eyes and opening your spiritual ears and you start hearing what you didn't hear before and you start discerning what's really going on instead of reacting to what you think, totally blind to, to the truth. Do you hear what I'm saying? Okay, so I say all that to say, 
Watch and pray. Wait on the Lord. Be still and know that he is God. And while you're doing that, mortify, mortify the works of your flesh so that your flesh don't mortify the things of your life. God bless you. I hope that opened your eyes to some things and how to handle calamity in your life and shifts. God bless you.